Welcome friends and neighbors. We're going to test some stuff out here. I've got I'm going to make the hand clap for synchronization. Make the hand clap for synchronization. And I've got the camera microphone up there recording. And I've got my brand new Shure SM58, which has got about a hundred million road miles on it. You can see that the ball's all rusty. Um, which I just picked up used at a the audio roadie uh, pawn shop in town and it is plugged into my and I've got the camera microphone up there recording and I've got my brand new Shure SM58 which has got about a hundred million road miles on it um, I just picked up used at a the audio roadie uh, pawn shop in town and it is plugged into my task cam the R40 at the moment because I don't have the interface to plug it into the computer so that's what I'm running right now we'll do some more testing in a few minutes with a couple of other mics that I've got just to see how this all works thank you very much So I've uh, now using my headset microphone, and I've loaded the audio track that was earlier recorded using the uh, camera's built-in microphone into Audacity. I'm going to show you the setup that I use to get this view. The preferences on tracks, I've got the default view set to spectrogram. And the spectrogram settings for logarithmic, 100 to 10,000 hertz. And... Uh, 2048 window size and I've selected grayscale because that just works better for, uh, based on the way I uh, learned to interpret these these pictures um, and so to orient you this is time and you'll see that in a minute so this is me speaking and on the vertical axis you have frequency um, and the intensity of the uh, of the markings correspond to the intensity of sound at that frequency at that time. Now let's listen to that. Welcome, friends and neighbors. We're going to test some stuff out here. Uh, okay, you can hear here at the beginning some noise. Welcome, friends and neighbors. We're going to. And then. Welcome, friends and neighbors. We're going to test some stuff out here. And you can see that noise. On the on the spectrograph now let's keep going welcome friends and neighbors we're going to test some stuff out here I've got I'm going to make the hand clap for synchronization now at this point I'm going to make the hand clap you can hear the cat make the hand clap make start the yelling clap. And again here for synchronization, for synchronization, for synchronization. The interesting thing about this is that the, the the sound of a human being speaking and the sound of a cat's vocalizations are completely different looking things on the uh, spectrograph. So now here comes the hand clap. An ideal perfect impulse, a single sharp hand clap should be a, a vertical line. It should have equal intensity at all frequencies and essentially zero duration. What we have here instead is a smearing at the upper frequencies across a pretty wide band. This is the echo. This is what an echo looks like. And then you can see another burst of noise. And I've got. And the 
the cat goes off again. So anyway, this is just showing you some features of the spectrograph, some things you can see in your sound. If we were to zoom into this, so that it covers most of the screen for us. You now you can really see that it looks like smearing. And if I switch my view, um, I think that that's here. Yes, I want the waveform now. You can kind of see, and we can zoom a bit more, yeah. You can kind of see the sound intensity from the first clap, and then there's a secondary peak. And uh, that would kind of give you some clue what the period of that echo is. In other words, how far, how far away the wall is that the sound is bouncing off of. It's not extremely clear here. We need something better than a hand clap to generate a sharp enough impulse to really identify the echo uh, return time um, with any degree of precision. But this long tail shouldn't happen with an impulse sound. Anyway, that's uh, a little introduction to sonogram analysis.